Welcome to Municipal Affairs. I'm Christopher Brown. After months of work behind the scenes, the Alberta government has finally unveiled the regulations around Bill 20, legislation that was passed in the legislature back in May. Now, according to the provincial government, Albertans expect free and fair elections, a cornerstone of any healthy democracy. And to that end, the government has made a series of changes aimed at boosting transparency and strengthening voter confidence in the lead up to the 2025 municipal elections. So what exactly does Bill 20 do, also known as the Municipal Affairs Statute Amendments Act? Well, it makes significant updates to both the Local Authorities Elections Act and the Municipal Government Act. For one, it sets expense limits for local election campaigns across the province. It also introduces new rules and regulations for political parties in the two major cities of Calgary and Edmonton. The province hopes that these regulations will gain greater transparency and accountability from local councils and elected officials. Now, these new regulations officially come into force on October 31st of this year, just in time for the 2025 election season. But the big question is, did the government really achieve its goal with Bill 20? Are these regulations enough to fix the issues that they were hoping to address? We sat down with Minister of Municipal Affairs Rick McIver to get his take on whether these new measures will make a meaningful difference in Albertans municipal governments. Minister, I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to talk to me about the regulations that were just announced earlier this morning in Edmonton. Uh, Simple question. Does this solve the issue that the province was trying to fix earlier in May? It helps. Uh, The the real one of the big issues is that uh, political party activity is already going on and there's no reasonable rules around it. Um, and it's a lot of money in, you know, that, that's going, um, being spent without any regulation around it. And, and the, you know, uh, up to, you know, $1.7 million we know about in Calgary towards seven or eight candidates, a couple different mayor's candidates, uh, you know, uh, that's, so there's 1.7 million from the union side, from the business side, there is one mayor's candidate with about $400,000, another one with about $500,000. So, you know what, the public deserves some accountability. Uh, it's already really uh, political party type activity going on, but with no reasonable fences around it, no reasonable accounting above it. So we're so yeah, I think we uh, I, I think we've come some way to making that better. Does this give the onus on to the municipalities to ensure that the regulations are followed or is the province going to be overseeing the next municipal election to ensure that these regulations are followed? Well, the province oversees the municipal election from the wider view, if you don't mind. But in each municipality, the municipality actually uh, administers the election and and uh, they should be uh making sure the rules are followed or doing their best. So yeah, that's, that's not new though. None of this is new just for the record that we didn't change that. The, the municipalities have been running the local elections always, as far as I know. So that is not new. So they follow the, the rules that are in place at the time the election's called. And so nothing has changed except some of the rules are different than they used to be, but the same essential people are looking after the enforcement thereof. After your press conference this morning, Alberta municipalities released a statement saying that this is going to inject more money into local elections, and that is not what they wanted. They wanted uh, less unfair advantages to those political parties. How do you balance injecting or opening up more contributions to political parties and local candidates over those quote unquote independent candidates? Yeah, well, uh, more money. I'd say Alberta munis is wrong. Let me just say it out loud. They're wrong. This will not inject anything into anything. Remember, when the NDP removed union and, and corporate donations, their promise was it would take the big money out of politics and more money was in the next election, not not less, more. So if anybody that thinks that you can have the, the uh, union movement or the business community sit in the sidelines and not try to put an oar in the water is fooling themselves. Um, in this case, it happens to be AB Muni's that's fooling themselves. The fact is, money just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It probably will continue. It's the nature of the beast. And, and I think that'll be true whether 
our regulations go into place or whether they do not. I just think that's the path that we're on. What the difference is, it will be a little more transparent because of what we've done. There will be annual recording uh, reporting requirements and there will be some controls on it. Remember, in the last election in Calgary, the union movement got $1.7 million to eight candidates. Like our rules will actually, the, the, uh, redu it's, well, they'll, it'll reduce it on the surface and, and I'm sure the union movement will try to find other ways to, to participate in the election. Okay, as long as it's legal, as long as they do it in a legal way, that's fine. And in some cases, the business community invested four or five hundred thousand dollars into a mayor's candidate, and at least on the surface. And 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 if they want to keep putting that money in, and I expect they probably will, as long as they do it in a legal way, it's okay. But there will be more reporting. There will be more transparency. And that's, I, I don't know how you can say that's not a good thing. And remember, with all due respect, and I was a municipally elected person and I'm still a provincially elected person, incumbents have a big advantage. So I'm sure the incumbents don't like the newcomers having been on a level playing field, but that's, but the nature of a campaign, an election campaign is that everybody should be on a level playing field. We think this levels the playing field a little bit. Um, there will always be an incumbent advantage simply because the incumbent's name and image is used in the media, you know, 52 weeks of the year, every single year. And then people get to know who they are and what their name is and what they stand for. And I guess in, if they're doing a good job, that's a good thing. If they're doing a bad job, that should be a bad thing. But if they're doing a good, so they, the incumbents already have a big advantage. And, and to me, I, this sure sounds like people trying to hang on to their incumbent advantage and, and, uh, and well, I guess that's a good political, smart political thing to do to hang on to your incumbent advantage. I'm not sure it's in the public's best interest. It's in the public's best interest to be able to look at all the candidates, new and old, compare their policies, compare who they're getting their money from, compare what they're saying they're going to do in the future, and then make a decision that people perceive is in the best interest of themselves and their family and their overall community. Why did the province believe that it was uh, smart to have two separate rules around political parties and slate of political parties when it came to financial uh, rec records? Well, it, it, there's a demand for each, I think. Uh, and, and going in past elections, there's people that want to band together on an ongoing basis saying we are a... Uh, a party that believes in fiscal responsibility. We're a party that believes in, or they might say we're a party that believes in building more infrastructure and providing more social services or both. But the point is people want to be able to uh, express their, their ambitions on what they're going to do. And some want to build a long-term group of people that the voters can say, okay, this is the group that I want to vote for every single election because I believe in that. And then there's issues that come and go. And that's what slates are good for. You know, remember in Vancouver, I think in the last year, it was a slate that really took out the the, the, the old guard in the election. Um, and sometimes it might be a group of parents, maybe in a, uh, let's say, you know what, there's not enough swimming pools for our kids to take swim lessons in and to compete in swimming. So they, they maybe their slate's idea is to fix that. There might be another group of people that said, you know what, it's not affordable, no tax increases. So we're the no tax increase slate and, and they can do that and call themselves the no tax increase, but they don't necessarily want an on the ongoing uh, administrative burden of a political party. So, so that's a choice they're allowed to make. And I think it's, they're both legitimate choices. We've, you know, we think there's an appetite for both those choices. We're providing those choices for candidates and and they can do that or they can run as independents as uh, has always been the case up till now and either way uh, i think it's healthy because people get to express themselves they get to jump into the municipal election to try to make the world a better place and then hopefully the voters with what we've done will have more information about who represents what and hopefully the voters uh will will be able to feel better about making the decision and that's who our real audience is our audience, our objective is not to make it easier for the incumbents to stick around forever. Our objective is also not to kick the incumbents out. Neither, neither of those things. Are our, our objective is for people, good people that want to run and, and, and make their municipality a better place will have a somewhat of a level playing field to do that. 
you want the regulations to be proclaimed by October 31st to be in place for next year's uh, general yep. election. Now, I'm just using the history as an example here. Last municipal election in Calgary, we saw Ray Jones, the city councilor for Ward 10, resign within that year period. If there is a resignation between now and the election, they do not have to call uh, by election municipalities, but they can if they choose. If they do choose, do they follow the rules that are currently in place or these new regulations that are going to be in place? They follow the new rules, but the schedule will be according to the by-election. Okay. Remember, part of the new rules is a schedule that, that the uh, election period starts January 1st, heading towards the third Monday in October election. That is the general election. Those are the general election dates. If there's a by-election, by-election dates will be established. When, when the ele- day of the election will be, the day the nominations close, and I suppose now there will be a, 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 a last day to, and, uh, and and I would guess if somebody running the by-election may join a pre-existing political party, right? And yeah. that they can do that now. So, so uh, essentially, that should be largely pretty similar to how it is now, okay. uh, unless the candidate decides to join a slate or a existing political party. And my final question for you, and it's around the uh, federal and provincial parties. This regulation says that no municipality political party can be aligned or be affiliated with any provincial or federal political party. Can slates be aligned with the political parties or no? No, 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 no. no. They can't have political, provincial and federal political parties cannot share money, information, resources with municipal parties. In fact, if there's a political party that forms in Edmonton and one in Calgary, they can't even be affiliated. They can be friends, they can agree on policy, but they can't share money. They can't share lists. They can't share resources. It's, we want to keep as much as uh, political parties are a legitimate thing to include in elections, we still want to keep local elections local. And, and uh, the fear that some people had that this is a takeover by the NDP, a takeover by the UCP, none of that is valid with this legislation. In fact, if anything, it's less possible with this legislation because now neither any party, not the UCP, not the NDP, not the Liberals, not anybody else can't share information, resources uh, with a municipal or their name with a municipal party. But while they can't share, and I apologize to interject here for a second, while the parties can't interject, people can work for the UCP and run or work for the anybody but Calgary party. Or if someone from the NDP can go work for the we don't like Edmonton party up there. So they can still work. It's just the parties can't actually exchange ideas, correct? That's right. Individual, we can't take away people's individual rights to association. If I want to go door knock for the federal uh, conservative party, I can. That doesn't mean, and maybe I'll door knock for the provincial NDP party. And maybe then I'll door knock for the municipal liberal-ish party, but though they won't be able to be called the liberal party, but some other, you know, we're a party with a policy. So that people can still fully participate in the political process, but the parties themselves cannot share information, data, money. Okay, I, I know I said I was going to ask one last question, but I do have this question I need to ask, if you don't mind. How will political parties be labeled on the ballot? Will they be labeled by name or they will be they be labeled by affiliation? Do you have regulations around that already in place? It'll, or it'll is that you're leaving name. up to the pro- municipalities? It's up to this. It'd be some name that they've chosen that is, shouldn't, isn't allowed to have any confusion about uh, whether there are any affiliation with a provincial or federal party. But can the municipality say, no, we're not going to name them and you're just going to put the candidate's name on? No, the legislation says that if the can- if the uh, if they meet the regula- the rules and get the signatures and all that, then they will the, the party name will be side- beside their name on the ballot. Perfect. Before I let you go, is there anything else you want to add to the people of Alberta who might be listening to this about what these regulations mean for them and this next municipal election in the city of Calgary and Edmonton? Well, if, 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 if it goes the way that we hope, 
voters will have a better idea when they go to the ballot box who they're voting for and why. And and doesn't matter the reasons. Some may vote for a candidate because they're union affiliated. Some may choose not to vote for a candidate because they're union affiliated. Some may vote for somebody because they're business affiliated. Some may we say, I'll never vote for them because it's okay. You get to choose. And that's what we want with people to have the information so they can make the choice. And, and we think that can only be a good thing. Minister, I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to do this. I know you have other interviews you need to do. So thank you so much. And I always appreciate your willingness to actually get the facts out there. Not everyone is on board with the new regulations. Just moments after the rollout, Alberta municipalities representing 265 member communities released a statement raising concerns. They believe these changes, especially the introduction of political parties in local elections, creates an uneven playing field and increased costs for candidates. Despite providing months of feedback, Alberta municipalities expressed disappointment that their input wasn't reflected. They also pointed out in the press release that Albertans have repeatedly called for less money in local politics, not more. While the new rules around local political parties only apply to Calgary and Edmonton for now, there's concerns from Alberta municipalities this could expand to other municipalities after this 2025 municipal election season. We sat down with Tyler Ganda, president of Alberta municipalities, to get his perspective and learn more about their concerns as an organization. President Ganda, thank you so much for sitting down with me uh, today. Uh, Rick McIver, Minister of Municipal Affairs, uh, finally, after months of uh, t- speaking with stakeholders, as he called it, uh, released the regulations around Bill 20. What was your initial thoughts on the regulations that were announced earlier Friday morning? Uh, disappointed, but not surprised. They were pretty pretty hard and fast in what their legislation was going to look like. Um, they were right from the beginning saying there was no movement on political parties at the municipal level in Edmonton and Calgary. Uh, voting tabulators was uh, was a no go. It wasn't didn't matter what we had for uh, data or um, what our members had talked about, or even the fact that Albertans weren't asking for this. They were moving forward with it. Um, big money in in politics again, and I think that. Uh, the way that they've got it set up in terms of per capita funding um, to fundraise for campaigns in Edmonton and Calgary um, is probably pretty good until you factor in the political parties who can also campaign. And if they've got candidates in all of the wards, they are now um, eligible to fundraise $1 per resident of that municipality, which is over a million dollars for both Edmonton and Calgary each, which they can then um funnel into a candidate's uh, election, their campaign. So there is absolutely more money in municipal politics, certainly in Edmonton and Calgary. So before we talk about some of the regulations in it and some of the concerns that Alberta municipalities has, uh, I want to go back to May because in May they announced Bill 20. They did some amendments around Bill 20 and then there was going to be consultation. Now in this press conference Friday morning, he did say that he did speak with stakeholders, including Alberta municipalities. From your perspective, how did those consultation processes go? And Did you feel like you were heard looking at what you're seeing that was introduced Friday morning? Yeah, I was happy with the opportunity that Alberta municipalities had um, as a mayor for the city of Wetaskiwin through mid-city mayors, uh, RMA, uh, some of the other stakeholders and associations that had the opportunity to provide input to what that legislation is going to look like. Um, Fantastic opportunity. I think we pushed really hard when they introduced Bill 20 saying that there should have been consultation before it was released. We could have worked through some of that legislation, helped them out on maybe some of the unintended consequences of so the uh, the legislation as it was, as it was written. Um, and I think that through that would have built a, a strong partnership moving forward. And and we still say that like Bill 20 is, is, is going forward. This new legislation takes effect October 31st. Um, but we will continue to make sure that um, municipalities that are, are dealing with 
this legislation or other stuff, we have the opportunity to, to provide input. We represent 265-ish municipalities across the province, 85% of the population of Alberta. Uh, we have a pretty good idea of the impact that uh, legislation like this has on our members. One of the big concerns that you raised is back in May and even in the press release that came out earlier Friday morning after the announcement, Alberta Municipalities press release, I should say, was that this is going to add, inject more money into local elections. And I'm saying inject is my words, but the addition of more money into local elections is not what Alberta municipalities wants or even Albertans want. I asked that question to Minister McIver earlier this on Friday after that announcement, and he said, quoting his interview, Quote, Alberta municipalities is wrong. Let me just say it out loud again. They are wrong. This will not inject more money into anything. He then went on to say, anyone who thinks that you can have the union movement and business community sit on the sidelines and not put an oar in the water is fooling themselves. In this case, it appear it happens to be Alberta Min AB Munis fooling themselves. End quote. What do you respond to that with? I guess we'll see. Um, like I said, when you are a candidate in Edmonton or Calgary and a part of a party there, and they're able to fundraise an extra million dollars and make sure that any of the candidates in a, in a ward that might be up against a, a strong candidate um, will have the opportunity to have more money in their campaign. Somebody running as an independent doesn't have that same opportunity. So they're, it's an uneven playing field. Uh, it is absolutely going to have the possibility of more money entering municipal politics. And it goes back to the very basics of Albertans weren't asking for municipalities to be a part of the party politics scene. Nobody was asking for it. I hear that um, I hear that the provincial government is responding to Albertans' need or request to have party politics in municipalities or taking vote voting tabulators, voting machines out of elections. I'm still wondering who these Albertans were um, and what data drives that that decision. When we are making decisions, it's, it's in the best interest of our communities. It's usually based on uh, a majority. <clears throat> but yeah, I guess with this legislation in place, taking effect October 31st, we will continue to, to watch the impact it has on municipalities and clearly state what is or isn't working. This isn't a, a fight that, that we wanna have with the province. It's how are we going to best serve our residents and how can municipally elected officials do the best job that they possibly can? And if we can provide input to the province, then, then we absolutely will. We continue to wanna be a, a partner with them uh, and provide input for uh, new legislation. Was there any silver lining from Alberta municipality standpoint in the, these regulations that were announced Friday morning or was, was it all, I hate to use the word bad, but bad. No, it wasn't all bad. Uh, one of the things I'm really encouraged about is that every member who gets elected has to take training, has to have an orientation before it had to be offered to that member of council. And I think that, um, Many people who get involved at the local level, especially in our smaller communities, um, don't have a, a strong understanding of what it is to be a member of council, what our roles and responsibilities are, what we're capable of doing. And so I think it's really important that we lay that, lay that out there right from the beginning. So I'm, I'm encouraged with that. The, uh, the ability to have criminal record checks um, implemented as well. I think it's important that if we're gonna talk about transparency, Members of council are are put out there in the public and have access to sensitive information. Um, we're doing readings at schools or, or other youth groups that we're a part of. I think it's important that our, our residents have the trust in us as well. And there's there's lots of pieces to Bill 20. Not all of it is bad for sure. I just think some of the big pieces there um, are going to make things harder for a municipality and for people to be elected at the local level at the end of this month the bill will be proclaimed and it will be in, put into law but we are recording this about two about 367 days away from the next municipal elections in the province of alberta 
what does Alberta municipalities now have to do now that these regulations are in place and it does not look like they're going to change? What does Alberta municipalities have to do to prepare for the next municipal elections across this province? We're going to continue working with our members and making sure that they have the tools uh, available for them to make the changes while we work into that next election. Uh, we want to work with both municipal affairs and RMA on developing some some sessions, some courses for people who are interested in running for for politics, um, so they have a better understanding before they they throw their hat in the ring. Same with the the training that comes after the fact. We would like to have a, a piece in that on what should or shouldn't be mandatory in terms of that training. I think it's really important that um, we develop it. Uh, with the best interest, again, of both the candidate and the municipality that they're serving. So we'll continue to do the work. We will uh, we'll keep all of our members updated on, on how it's going. And, of course, getting the feedback from our members and the impacts that this new legislation is going to have. We're already hearing the, the costs are going to be higher for those bigger cities that used to use voting tabulators, now have to have them hand counted. So having more election workers. So we'll be reporting back to the province on what that impact is. Minister McIver has said that um, municipal elections are the cost is to the municipality, which is absolutely true. It just makes it really difficult when the province introduces legislation that um, costs us more money. And so when we have things like that happening and we have the infrastructure deficit that we have, the grants in place of taxes that, that has been cut over the last few years, um, it just it's one thing after another and municipalities who are extremely resilient and can work with the little that they have and make sure that uh, all of the needs are looked after and our residents are looked after as well. So and we'll continue to do that. That won't change. Last question before I let you go, Tyler, what's what's your message to Albertans today that who are waking up to this news that political parties are about to be introduced or will be there in Calgary and Edmonton in 2025, and we already see the political parties starting to launch, starting to take place. What's your message to Albertans today? I think my message would be the same whether or not these changes were happening. It's get involved and um, get to know your candidates, ask the questions, find out what their priorities are, and uh, and be like get out and vote. We have such a low voter turnout in municipal elections when we're looking at anywhere between. 20, 25% up to maybe 35%. Uh, I think it's a real opportunity for you to have your voice heard in the community that you live in. We we provide the very first level of service and probably we're closest to the, to the people every day. Um, and it's really important that you choose people that are electing you or that you're electing to represent you uh, and you have a good understanding of who they are and what they believe in. Tyler, always a pleasure to sit down with you. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to talk about these new regulations and how it impacts municipalities. Always a pleasure. Appreciate it. Thanks, Chris. Thank you so much for tuning in for another episode of Municipal Affairs. We hope you enjoyed today's discussion and conversation around Bill 20. If you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button if you're listening to this on audio platforms or if you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button today. Your support and your subscriptions helps us to continue to grow and bring you more important conversations like you heard today to you. So stay connected, stay informed, and we'll see you next time here on Municipal Affairs. Until then.